Welcome back to New Jersey Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosado. Unfortunately, diseases that we thought were once eradicated have recently made a reappearance in the United States. Recent increases in measles among children can be linked directly to falling vaccination rates. The CDC has already reported more than 120 cases of the airborne illness in 2015. That's a number that continues to rise, by the way. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Peter Wenger, who specializes in pediatric infectious diseases at St. Peter's Healthcare System. Good to have you, Doctor. No, it's a pleasure being here. Thanks for having me. Well, it must be shocking to be a healthcare uh, provider in the United States today and think of a disease that we basically declared 15 years ago to be gone, uh, to see this many cases, a number of cases in two months, higher than we normally see in a whole year. No, that's right. And the uh, Mr. Dutch, let me. Uh, talk about the terminology. We haven't sure. eradicated measles. We've eliminated it from okay. the United States. And I, it's a semantic difference, but the, the, we've eradicated smallpox, meaning okay. that there is no smallpox on the face of the earth. Okay. except in a laboratory pattern. Measles is still circulating. In the United States, there's no continued transmission. But around the world, there are pockets of, of areas that unfortunately are still plagued by measles. Now, the world is a very small place. Right. So people travel here, especially right. places like Disneyland, and if they are unfortunately infected at that time, they can then spread it, especially to pockets, of, to groups of, uh, to populations that are unvaccinated in the United States. Yeah, I was reading that uh, one other re health report was talking about this may be linked back to this, uh, this big strain that came out of the Philippines, that uh, a family very innocently may have traveled, maybe not even was symptomatic came into the uh, to Disneyland, passed it on there, and then went home, and then the symptoms became fully symptomatic, maybe in the process or whatever, and, yeah, and that's th how it happens. That's true. Now, it, again, you know, it's in the Philippines, they did have a measles outbreak in 2014 by the same strain that's in the United States, sure. but it's also been found in the United States oh, absolutely. with no connection to the Philippines. Right. So it's really, the Philippines is just another area that, right. that has They were measles. saying it was a similar genetic uh, that's characteristic. Right. That's, that's, right. that, that's just one, one theory of many, just before, so no one gets upset. Said. Right. Um, but what are the symptoms, just so that people know? There's, uh, there's the traditional rash, but there are a lot of other symptoms. Uh, okay, as well. well, the beginning is our, what we call our influenza like <laughs> illness. That children or adults, they'll have uh, conjunctivitis, red eyes, mm -hmm. red weeping eyes, a runny nose, what we call coryza. What's also important is, uh, and it's almost in every case of measles, you have a prominent cough. And right. is, that, is that because and basically that same rash you see on the skin is literally happening in the mucosa as well? It's happening inside the... Absolutely, right. The, the measles virus infects the uh, uh, respiratory epithelium and from head to... Not from head to... From the lungs up, right? right? So that many of the complications are associated with respiratory epithelium, the most serious being pneumonia, which mm -hmm. probably causes... is the reason for most deaths in children. That's amazing. But it also affects other cells. It affects cells of your immune system so that you actually become immunosuppressed. And it could get and it could affect your central nervous system. So the one of these very serious complications is called encephalitis, which is a swelling of the brain, which often, if it doesn't kill you, can lead to permanent brain damage. But the common measles, what we talked about, is the first few days is this runny nose, red eyes, fever, and cough. What is the treatment and protocol, the, doctor, if you have... If there is no treatment. Oh, I, it's supportive treatment. I remember, I'm old enough <laughs> to have had the measles. Right. I was born before 1957, before a vaccine was introduced in the early 1960s, and I had the measles. And I still remember in our apartment... What you would do is you would put your kid in the room, close the door, turn the lights off, because you'd also develop photophobia. Oh, lights wow. would bother your eyes, and wait it out. That's, and how long does it last? A it lasts about, with the prodrome and the rash, uh, a little over a week and a half or so, if everything goes okay. Now, what about booster Two shots? Weeks. I mean, if you've had the, the shot, is there, is there a chance you could still develop measles? Yeah, the, uh, shot... Uh, Vaccinations, which are wonderful, <laughs> it is your greatest protection. Sure. When we start in 1963, after 19, when we first introduced the shot, there was a 99 percent decrease in measles. Okay, but measles in the pre-vaccine era, over 90 percent of the population was shown to, ha to have had measles before wow. 15 years of age. That's almost everybody. 
there was a 99% decrease. We now have less than one in a million people get measles. It's amazing. It, it, it's absolutely remarkable. And it can kill. I mean, it can and kill. And it can kill. It, uh, 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 now in the United States, maybe you get one to two per thousand. But certainly in other parts of the world, especially where um, nutrition may be an issue, where you have malnourished ch children, mm -hmm. fatality rates could be up to 25%. Oh, wow. So it's not a benign disease. You know, unfortunately, I've heard sometimes, oh, what do you, let's have a measles party. Bad Crazy. idea. Crazy. That's where you have somebody with the measles and you bring everybody around in a That's room, right. right? And you literally, right. yeah, you, you party up and hang out with the person hoping to contract the measles That's until right. you get it over. Why would you want it? Who had this concept? Yeah, no, it's, and you have to, 30% of people who get measles will have a complication of some sort. Hmm. 30%. It's not a benign disease. Now, what about some other diseases out there that, I mean, we're talking about vaccines. People are talking about, you know, there was the worry about complications, uh, having too many um, uh, vaccinations at the same time, potentially causing immune issues. That has, there's been no research to say that that no, is a fact, right? Just the whole cell pertussis vaccine, which was available when I was a kid, will give you more antigenetic, what we call antigenetic stimulation than all the vaccines that we get today. So my son, who gets, who's gotten all his vaccines, mm -hmm. has way more vaccines than I did, got much less antigenetic load than I did, because I had the smallpox vaccine and I had the wholesale pertussis. And those by themselves in the 1950s was more, gave greater antigenetic stimulation than all the vaccines put together, by far. Today, let me tell you, this was in, we brought the kid, bring your kids to, to uh, uh, work. Okay. okay. Right? So everybody in our department had their kids there. And then uh, we just said, oh, we're going to, they're going to interview us and we're going to interview them. And so the interviews was, what diseases have you had? And when the kids were interviewing the adults, they were going, oh, we had measles, we had mumps, we had whooping cough. These parents, were, we were going through everything. Then we didn't, what have you had? Well, I had a fever once. <laughs> And you look at their absentee records. My son went two years without missing a day. That's amazing. Right? I looked at my first grade. I missed like 30, 35 days. Wow. And you still became a doctor. And I still became a doctor. <laughs> On that note, get your kids vaccinated That's just right. for their own health and safety. Dr. Right. Winger, thank you so much. For it was a pleasure. So thank you for pleasure. having me. It was great to have you. Yeah. For information on all the organizations featured on Viewpoint, if you miss a segment would like to watch the show at your leisure, do so at 7online.com slash Viewpoint. We're coming right back with a fun new video gaming app that teaches your child about financial literacy at the same time it helps them to d develop a sense of philanthropy. Don't go away.